Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Do you know what we're doing today right now? Well, technically, it's still Saturday, so Mm -hmm. I guess that means we're doing... Q&A Saturday! That's right. And so what will we be queuing and aing today? Well, today we're going over Isaiah chapters 25 through 29, which I got to tell you, (laughs) really fucked up my math for a minute. It did. It did. Yeah, you you don't like non-multiples of five. Well, we did five. It was just not... Like, under normal circumstances, this would be chapters 26 through 30. Right. But last week, we only did four. Right. So, we're off, and my math is off. We are, and yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, you got any anything to cover before we get into this, or should we just jump in? Let's just jump in. All right. Let's do this. Okie dokie. <laughs> All right, so we are doing Q&A Saturday, and we are covering Isaiah chapters 25 through 29. Correct. Okay, so let us not forget that 25, 26, and 27 were still part of that um, Isaiah apocalypse. Right. So bad things are coming down the pipe. Yep. Right? So chapter 25 was about praise for the Lord's favor. Okay. Okay. And they were praising what God has done and it was all kinds of God is great kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. And, um, but in verse two, it said the city will never be rebuilt. And there was all kinds of questions about what are they, which city, the city, what yeah. is the city? Right. Right. And a cursory glance of the passage would encourage readers to understand, obviously this must be referring to Babylon. Because that's okay. what they were kind yeah, of talking yeah, yeah, about. Right, right. But some scholars suppose that Samaria was intended. Okay. okay. But here we go. Guess what? Not everybody agrees. Oh. Others contend that the word is used collectively and that various cities are intended. Like I see. the city, like all the ones that God's knocking down. Okay. Uh-oh, but guess what? That might not be it either. That might not be it either. Some Jewish scholars generally understand it to be Rome. Oh. Rome will never be rebuilt. Okay. Oh. While still other leaders in the Jewish community understand it to refer to many cities which they say will be destroyed in the coming times of Gog and Magog. Okay. So that's a whole thing. Got it. Okay. There's a lot of cities that might never be rebuilt. Right. Yeah. Who knows? Though Rome definitely still exists. I know it, that it I know does. that one for sure. It does. Yeah. yeah. So so that happened in, in chapter twenty five, like what was that about? I don't know. Right. Okay. Yeah. So chapter 26 was about a song of trust in the Lord's protection. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Nothing particularly good or bad in in that for me to cover. Like there's no special notes other than that. Don't forget it's still part of the Isaiah apocalypse. Okay. Um, Generally that chapter was about the city of God and the versus the city of man. Okay. Like talking about relying on the systems that man has built up versus the systems that God wants you to rely on. Okay. Um, God's people anticipate vindication and there was a community lament. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of that chapter, God's people anticipate vindication and that gets continued on into the next chapter. Okay. Okay. Yep. So Isaiah 27. So this is the last of the Isaiah apocalypse yeah okay right so um this one was interesting because they talked about leviathan right right Wait, we skipped right over like they didn't cover whether it was zombies or not in 26 no we didn't 
that wasn't something that I came up. I want to know if they were really zombies. Well, then I will do a special little extra <laughs> thing about zombies, but that wasn't Assume. part of my legit uh, um, studies. Okay. Okay. Right. So I apologize. I skipped right over that. I was trying to be serious. Mm. And and I wasn't my normal fun loving self. All right, all right. So I'll go back though at some point, and we'll talk about zombies in the Bible. Okay. Okay. Yep. I I really think we ought to reserve zombies in the Bible to after Jesus comes and dies though. Okay. But but there's other zombies. I like, know, but we just... could do a whole zombies in the Bible oh, special. Oh, I see, I see. And like lump them all in. Okay. You know. Why do we only have to do one special? We could do zombies all the time. Why don't we discuss this some other time I'm when just... I'm not on the spot? <laughs> Jeez. That that sounds great, dear. Okay. I'll study all, right. all the zombies. And great. Yeah. We will talk Let's about turn it into a zombie, a biblical zombie podcast, you know? Okay. We can do why, that. Why doesn't that exist? It should exist. It should exist, honestly. Yeah, right? Just in time for not Halloween. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> timing's not my best thing, so. No, it really isn't. But let's talk about Leviathan, though. Leviathan, yes. Okay. So the language used here draws on mythology and ancient myths of uh, nations near Israel. Okay. Okay. Yep. And the term Leviathan, as used here, is normally linked with Ugaritic Lotan. Do you okay. remember us talking about Lotan before in one kind of our specials? Of, yes. He sort was of. the chaos monster destroyed by Baal in the Canaanite creation myth. Oh, it may okay. be applied figuratively to monstrous enemies of Israel and therefore also of God. I see. Okay. Okay. Leviathan is also referred to in Job and in Psalms. Do you remember that? Vaguely. These passages reinforce the idea of Leviathan as a mighty serpent like creature connected with the sea who resists God and will be crushed by the Lord. Yeah. In about two set sentences or so. Yeah. 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 I was very disappointed with that. Uh, I was as well, but it's something that's referred to big time um, when it comes to like the end times and that whole Gog and Magog thing. Sure, okay? sure. So what I, I found out since, because I was curious about Leviathan a little bit, mm -hmm. but apparently there's like this whole like um, Leviathan cult type thing. Like it's Ooh. almost kind of connected with like devil worshiping maybe mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure how that all works in and, and i'm sure by devil worship i'm not really meaning like they literally worship the devil or leviathan it's probably similar thinkings to spiritualism or something like that but there's like a symbol and everything it's really cool oh wow yeah, it's, like, it's like it's like an upside down that. cross with like a infinity symbol on the bottom interesting yeah it's really neat huh had not heard of that. I, I something I definitely want to look into more at some point. So, sure. Yeah. Uh, along with our zombies. We well, yeah, zombies and leviathans and yeah, all yeah. that. Lions and tigers. That's, that's and good shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, in the kingdom of the Lord, Israel receives mercy. Go, just going on through sure. that chapter. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. God shows His mercy to Israel, and that even though He struck Israel. When Israel went astray. He didn't kill them all. He did not strike Israel as severely as he did the other nations. So right. it's like the abusive husband who says, why are you crying? I didn't hit you as hard as I could have. You should have seen the wife I had before you. Not not me, husband. Oh, no, 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 no. I was just not clarifying. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it, that that's what it reads as. Like, this whole sure. abusive, like, I'll give you something to cry about. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So God shows his mercy to Israel in that he destroyed their idolatrous altars and images and forced them to worship only him. But how many times have we heard that fucking story over and over and over and over again? He's always destroying all, all the idols and all the gods and all the whatevers, and they just keep coming back over and over and over again. Spoiler alert, they'd never get destroyed. Right, yeah, it's... It's dumb. It is. And it's tiresome, moreover. Right. It's just, it's like, it's, he's just like pumping his chest out and going, I'm going to do this thing and then not actually do it. Yep, it's true. So God makes the nation submit to him because that's what a merciful, loving God does. <laughs> right? And then in the kingdom of the Lord, the city of man lies desolate. Mm. And in the kingdom of the Lord, he is worshipped in Jerusalem. I, so, okay. 
that happened in chapter 27. By all the people he didn't kill. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was the end of the apocalypse stuff. Okay. <laughs> yes. So now we're in 28. And 28 through 35 are a collection of quote unquote poems on Israel and Judah. Right. Okay. But mostly what I've got out of it so far is drunkenness. Well, yeah. So, Obviously. And yeah. blindness. Right. Right. And illiteracy. Yeah. And he's going to wipe away intelligence and wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are mostly directed to the southern kingdom of Judah, since it is most often effective to address a sin present in a third party and then apply it directly to the person. Isaiah will first speak of the sin of Israel and then switch the focus to Judah. Mm. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if that's something that that we missed. I, I certainly, I certainly did not catch I mean, that. he was talking. I thought he was talking about enemies, but I mm -hmm. guess given the time frame of this. They were two different kingdoms, so mm -hmm. I guess those people could be considered um, enemies at that point sure. in time. So sure. that might that that I, I just didn't catch that that exactly was what was going on. Same, same. So in this particular chapter, chapter twenty eight, um, we talked about the condemnation and captivity of Ephraim. Do you remember all that? That's where he was talking about the sinful state of the drunkards of Ephraim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. And a flood of judgment upon the drunkards of Ephraim. Right. Okay. Now, in verse one, it said, Woe to the crown of pride to the drunkards of Ephraim. Yeah. Crown refers to Samaria, which was the capital city of the northern kingdom of Israel, where the priests and prophets are included among the drunkards. Okay. Okay. Yep. So then it goes on to talk about the beauty of the Lord replacing the faded beauty of Ephraim and the corruption of drunkenness in Judah and God's message to those who are ripe for judgment and the simple message gets mocked. Mm, okay. We love them mocking mockers. Right, right. Right. Yeah. And Isaiah warns of the consequences of rejecting the simple message of the Lord. Okay, so then he gives the warning to Jerusalem. The the message that he's giving. Yes. By by for the Lord. Yes. To Jerusalem. He's like, stop mocking you, me. Did it ever occur to Isaiah or anybody that maybe he just wasn't the best messenger? Could that? I mean, that's what I would have thought. But who am I? If he can't seem to get the point across, maybe it's a him issue. Right. You know? He's like, stop mocking me. I'm trying to tell you what the God said. Right. Yeah. Oh, but the Lord doesn't like it when you make fun of me. <laughs> so he gives a message, a warning to Jerusalem. Okay. okay. Yeah. And he talks about the cornerstone, of which is Zion. Right. Okay. The false confidence of sinful leaders, the security of the Messiah, and the precarious place of sinners. And he gives advice to those ripe for judgment. Right. And we end that chapter with a parable of the farmer. Yeah. The timing of the farmer versus the timing of God. Right. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember that boring I, silliness? I do. I do. All right. So then we move on to chapter 29, which is what we just finished reading. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we talk about a problem solved and a problem started, kind of like Eminem or not Eminem. Um, vanilla ice. Sorry, different white wrapper. Um, um, you're gonna have to clarify here. If you've got a about. problem, yo, he solved it. Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry, okay. All sorry. Right. We talked about Ariel and her enemies. To so check out my God while Isaiah revolves it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay, you right, got it. Sorry, yeah. yeah. I just, it was it was it was rattling around in my brain. Mm -hmm, I had to get it out. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I apologize that I even said Eminem. I was <laughs> like, I, sometimes when you get old, you like. <laughs> Things start to blend together. Is that what happens? That's exactly what happens. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. I am two years older than you. You are. So, so I guess it's coming any day now. Yeah. You're yeah, just not just, quite I gotta, there yet. I got to get there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I don't know if you recall, you know, just 10 minutes ago when we read this, <laughs> that verse one said, woe to Ariel, to Ariel, the city where David dwelt, add year to year, let feasts come around. Yeah. So Ariel is Jerusalem and means literally lion of god oh okay okay some scholars suggest that the term ariel is de derived from the root ari a-r-i meaning to burn such that isaiah expects that jerusalem will become like the altar which we read about later in that same section which i.e would be a scene of holocaust oh wow and, yeah wow so he's talking about burning the shit down Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
given the context of the verses, calling Jerusalem Lion of God is probably sarcastic. The repetition of the name, it's used four times in two verses. Yeah. And the context of God's judgment against Jerusalem suggests the idea that Jerusalem may have thought of herself as the Lion of God, but God certainly did not share that lofty opinion of the city as we read. Got it. So it was almost like a mocking of Mm -hmm. them referring to themselves that way, sort of? Yeah, exactly. He's like, yeah, go on, Ariel. Speaking of Ariel, I'm going to burn your shit down. Right, right. You know? But it was very confusing to just throw out that new name for Jerusalem just out of nowhere. Yeah, it was new to us, but it would not have been new to the people at the time. Sure. No, I, I get it. But in reading the Bible, yes. you know, like it's it comes across as very abrupt like, and like, what, what? what are we talking are you about? talking about? Yeah. But that's why we do these so that we can like try to like, what the fuck did I just read? But this is also part of the reason why I have such immense trouble believing that any of this is not even okay so logically i just don't believe there's god period the end that doesn't require the bible nothing anything like that Mm -hmm. but like beyond that if you are going to tell me that i'm supposed to find god in the bible Mm -hmm. or or whatever reading through this thing it's not it's not put down in a way that makes a lot of sense like you you would think a god could make their their one book that they have to to mm-hmm. spread their message right a lot more clear and a lot more concise what i've come to the conclusion of is that the bible is more like for the uber fans like <laughs> you already believe in god and then you read this for like the background shit if okay. you're interested in stuff that you already like yeah, yeah. it's not for noobs that come in and want to like figure out. So what's God? No, that's not how you do it. Like, sure. Like it's like if you were reading about a band and you read all of their lyrics and you read all of their stuff, but you had never heard their music before. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Like you're supposed to have already gone to the concert or at least heard a few songs on the radio. Okay. And then you're like, wow, I really like this music. I wonder what the song is. So it's it's really, it's our fault. We've never heard God on the radio. Yes, that is correct. Although I would go further and say that it's God's fault because he never released a single. That's yes, true. If it was, it definitely wasn't a hit single. Mm, mm. No, not in the U.S. Never made the charts here anyway. Yeah. Not, never... not in this household. Mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, if he like turned on that light switch that we talked about yeah. and made us interested in seeing what is God all about, I might be interested in believing in God. Right. Then we would experience God and then want to learn more and then read the Bible. But that's not how the Bible is presented to us. The Bible is presented as you should read this and find God. no. Actually, that's backwards, guys. Right. You're supposed to, like, find God and then read the Bible. That's sure. That's my interpretation. That, that's, that's my That's understanding. the way you see it's supposed to. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, whatever. Regardless, I Why? don't believe in God. I've never felt God. Yeah. I, I don't know what the fuck is going on. And the Bible is not helping me. It's just making matters worse. Right. So, right. Yeah. for me, it wouldn't have mattered because there was never going to be... Hearing the single and being interested in learning more about the band. Right. And I, I'm just, I just want to reiterate the words in the Bible don't lend credibility to it. No, they so, really don't. That's all. So, at any rate, God didn't share that lofty opinion of the city. Okay. okay. Yeah. It may be that the people of Jerusalem had taken to calling themselves by the name Ariel to both express and strengthen their confidence. Okay. Kind of like how we call, like, um new york the big apple or whatever right, like yeah. in centuries to come they would be like there's not an apple though right they don't even grow apples there or what like the our, our hometown is you know it's, it's dayton mm-hmm. and they call it the gem city oh yeah so yeah, yeah. you know like we give them names that are you know better loftier than what they actually, actually are. are so yeah. yeah the shining city on the hill what's that that one is sounds um, familiar Washington, like i should know it dc kind of thing oh um, like, okay. like we should all, uh, um, it, it's supposed to be representative of the great city of freedom of the U S to oh, okay. sh- like the thing that we're supposed to aspire to, Got it. to 
for other countries to want to be like us. Got it. Got that it. whole shining city on the hill. You okay. Know? Got it. Like we we should want to be better, and other people want to be us. Got it. All right. So that was Ariel, and what she meant. She's a city. Okay. Not a mermaid. Yeah. Neither little nor big. Sure. Okay. Okay. And there's no Ursula. That's that's sad. That is sad. Did you know that the character of Ursula in in Disney's Little Mermaid was actually based upon a drag queen? I. Did because you've told me that. Mm. Yeah, I just thought that was so cool, and it. Uh, I'm going way off topic here, but um, I have discovered so many Disney characters are queer coded because of the artists involved in creating the Disney yeah movies, right. and it's just so sad that it has to be queer coded and can't just be like blatant and out there because it's becoming more that way. Like, they are doing better about actually bringing some of this stuff Slowly, into quietly. the mainstream a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but, yeah. No, I, I agree with you, though. Especially, you know, in our childhood, a lot of that stuff was very not... They had to hide it. Mm -hmm. They had to hide it 100%. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. Like, lots of hidden signals and messages and right. images. Sure. I just, I would, I would like to see a world where everything's just, like, normalized and it doesn't fucking matter. Right. Right. But again, that's way off topic and beyond the scope of this me measly little podcast. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, do you have anything else for us to cover here? Well, did you want to talk a little bit about the blindness that came on i mean i i didn't really have a lot of notes to take about it because it was all very straightforward i'm gonna make it blind and unable to read okay you know i mean what what kind of like what's the highlights of the notes that you do you have highlights of them um okay so in let me back away from that yeah from from for a minute okay okay so verse six said you will be visited by the lord of hosts and in some translations, the word visited is actually rendered as punished. Oh, yeah. Okay. You will be punished, not visited. Got it. You will get spanked, not invited to tea and crumpets. Ah, that's sad. That's a completely different context. Right. That's yeah. not even the same fucking word. No. Okay. Yep. So then um, when we talk about blindness and hypocrisy in Israel, yeah. the spiritual blindness is going to be... Um, this spiritual stupor and illiteracy and all of that that was talked about. Okay. Um, it, there are people who actually compare that to the sleep that Adam was put in to when he was placed in a coma for God to draw out his rib. Oh, okay. In right. creating Eve in the second um, creation story. Right, right. Yeah. So I just thought that was interesting that some of the... Uh, words translate similarly so that that could have been the kind of sleep that the stupor that god hmm. was referring to okay and um there's supposed to be a supernatural act of changing hearts and imparting new wisdom and i'm like okay, okay. I'm, i i could see so that um, that almost makes sense if you're talking about like the bit from adam and or when he was Taking Adam's rib, right? Mm -hmm. If that's the kind of stupor you're talking about, like he took the rib and made a woman, right? Mm -hmm. But we're talking about God in Israel putting them into the stupor and then making them more fearful of God and more reverent, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. it's a it's just more of a spiritual mm -hmm. implantation than yes. than creating a new physical, or creating a whatever. new being, but instead of a new physical being, a new spiritual being right right yeah I, I mean that would be an interesting way to take that as a as a metaphor yeah so yeah. so i thought that was interesting yeah you know i i always love the literary parts yeah for sure when we're talking about the wording of stuff right so verse 22 in that last chapter i found very interesting it says therefore thus says the lord who redeemed abraham concerning the house of jacob Jacob shall not now be ashamed, nor shall his face turn pale. Okay. okay. The phrasing is particularly suspicious because there is no incident in the biblical history of Abraham. Right. To which the expression, quote, redeem is specially appropriate. 
Okay. There is, however, a late Jewish legend about his being delivered from a fiery death prepared for him by his heathen relations. And that apparently is something we'll read about in the Book of Jubilees. Oh. And the words may be a later interpolation, meaning something that was added on after this book was written, which was already okay. later than some of the other stuff. Got it. Got it. So, yeah. again, with the... The extras and the the more, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We'll never, we'll never, we're never gonna finish this. No, it's ever. just always gonna, we're gonna keep going on and on and on. Yeah, and you still want to talk about fucking zombies and yeah, well, yeah, that's that's I mean, fun. I'm just saying, like, there's this stuff, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, no, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So is that all we? Uh... That now that's all I have. Yeah, all that right. Is my notes. Well, that was our Q and A for this Saturday. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're going to wrap this up here and we will be back uh, tomorrow with or later today, depending on when I get this actually released Mm -hmm. um, with our. Well, you'll be doing your weekly. No, prior to that, we'll be doing a Patreon. Right. Yes. And then I'll be doing my weekly wrap up that I put together. And then we'll be back on Monday with Isaiah chapter 30. All right. We'll see you guys then. Yep. Bye. Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh, yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.